out of it. And you know, I think Chris had the excellent blend of righteous indignation and the legal chops to back it up. I, I, oh, it was he a did. perfect, wasn't he, it? He, Let me disabuse you of the notion that these are private events. When a former attorney general has a uh, publicly advertised rally when she's running for U.S. Senate, that's not a private event. What is a private event? Well, I don't know. My niece's communion and my girlfriend and the father of that child have a bar mitzvah for him. Those are private events. This is not a private event at all. Yeah, like you said, it was in the paper. You were, you were allowed. But somewhere in there, there's a small little note saying no Chris King or no black man or, or something. <laughs> Put that thing away, man. You can get arrested. Yeah, <laughs> on this property. Yes, I. So how can a uh, a an event with a public invitation be private? Be a private event? I don't understand that. To answer your question, I do believe that there is racial issues there because, as you stated to the judge, that um, they do it in a different manner, and it's not always visible to the eye. They just uh, state claims that aren't re in reality. And as for media coverage, you have absolutely every right to be in there. And why were you chosen apart from um, the whites? Why Why did they just choose you to leave? Yes, the question that, I That's too. definitely racial, in my opinion. Well, she said there, there hasn't been discovery, so how will we know? You're right. How do oh, we know? That's I think, that, I think the judge is going to be looking at uh, things really close, but I think that uh, I think you presented a good case, and you were uh, by yourself, and there were four guns against you, you know. And uh, I, I think the judge is leaning towards your you know, your favor. We'll see. Regarding private property, when I call them for no trespass, oh, sorry, I can't help you out. I've been to the FBI, state prosecutor, we can't help you out. Yeah. But you've got police departments pre arranged to protect private property when it's supposed to be, hey, if somebody's trespassing, can you come get them out of here? What are they doing collecting a public paycheck on private property right. and keeping people out? It's yeah, selective yeah. prosecution. But when yeah. I call the police department, sorry, we can't help you, everybody else. So it's going to be fascinating how you prevail on the race side of it. And you know, I think Chris had the excellent blend of righteous indignation and the legal chops to back it up. I, I, oh, it was he a did. perfect, Wasn't he, it? he walked that line, he was wagging his finger and it's cool. The judge said, pull that finger back, but you had just the right amount of being angry, <laughs> but enough, it wasn't just pure anger. It was anger with enough with direction. That, direction. Yeah, that's the type of thing that comes out that doesn't show. That, that he was speaking of in his case that racial doesn't always look like you want it to. You've look. got more clever in how you mask it. Exactly. Yeah. And it could be purple, green. Sure. It, it doesn't could matter. be. It doesn't matter. That's right. right. And this happens to be it's this particular color. And, uh, it's going to be interesting how that judge rules. Well, you know, it's serious because they, they, got, they got the biggest guns they could get. Right. You know, they've got you right. know, New Hampshire Bar Association president defending this. Correct. You know? Correct. Uh, Good I job. Well, maybe it's a classic it's David Glass story, story, huh? It was right on point with some of the uh, problems that I've been dealing with. Right. With Kelly Ayotte. You know, right. the fact that uh, she had me falsely arrested and charged with a crime that I never committed and a court found, you know, because I stood up for my son's rights and exercised my First Amendment right to uh, oppose the court's discriminatory denial of my son's right to uh, equal education in the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, I should have mentioned your case in there. I forgot. I got so busy uh, with the First Amendment issues. But yours was also a First Amendment issue, too. Yes. And I should have mentioned yours. Because, but it's in the pleading. Well, the, you know. the, be honest with you, I'm still waiting on the First Circuit Court of Appeals because I have a good feeling that I'm going to hang Buffetti, Bond, and Hannigan over what they did to me. Yes, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ralph Holder was victimized. Uh, he was uh, basically he was arrested and house searched and all that. And uh, they made allegations that he had physically harmed his daughter. And they withheld an ENT report. And one of the attorneys responsible for that was the attorney defending the National Police here today, um, who uh, is exiting out the side door. <laughs> That's why we haven't seen them out here. They're gone out the back. <laughs> coming and going, and they want to say, oh, well, you don't have any proof of how we work together or what we did in terms of the conspiracy to keep you out, but how could I have any proof because I haven't had any discovery? You know, they, you can't have it both ways, guys. So yeah. you have to have a trial or you have to have a hearing in order to discover that fact. Well, yeah, there's a lot of things that I need. And at <laughs> that point, you can prove it. Or I can at least show, uh, to make an inference, right. that, hey, these guys met to discuss me or whatever, 
but it's just at this point, they basically don't want to get into any discovery as to what their policies are regarding the media or any of that, because it's kind of opened up a can of worms when the GOP policies are out there. And that's what I've requested, is what are your policies when it comes to the media? And, and they, won't, they won't say. Well, well the issue this is policy with Kelly Ayotte. Um, she doesn't want to open a can of worms. Yeah. Okay? She yeah. never wants Dead to, whether it's a candidate, right. a candidate, yeah. a U.S. Senator, yeah. or a New Hampshire Attorney General. Yeah. I'm waiting for the day when she will be held accountable. Yes. That's Good it. Luck to you, Accountability. Thank you. Yeah. That's it That's right us. there. Accountability. Yeah. It's no. very important. And this is my sweet young brother, Christopher, who is, out of four brothers, he's the youngest. Um, he's my, I have four brothers, three of them are in the military. My father is um, an actually an elected official for the city of Nashville. He's an alderman, and he's also a veteran for, um, he, he serves for the um, army. And I am in this situation due to something that, it's a different type of topic, but um, it's not a good situation for a lot of these residents in New Hampshire, and people need to start paying attention and speaking up and ho asking people to, claim responsibility and be accountable for their actions and their duties. And I agree, she has covered up some issues. She has conspired with others, as she has, you know, with yours that you claim in this case here. And we're familiar with the when other is she gonna, scam, you know. Yes. When, when will she be held accountable and forced to answer? And I think that you're entitled to your uh, jury trial, that's what you want. A trial by jury, Absolutely. you have that right. Well, yeah, yeah, I would circles around. And what were you saying at the beginning when I, when I called him on the fact that the, uh, the case that he had had um, was a couple years old and he allowed them to amend? You said you observed something at that point. Right. I caught, I caught the judge look over at the clerk, I believe, and gave a wink and gave you a nod of approval and said, Good job. Good points. Good points, King. Yeah, momentum was against you. You swung it back from go, and, and it was. And I don't know if you did it ad lib or you did it on purpose, but your timing was dead on because you definitely shifted the momentum for him to actually open his ears and listen to you, where he might have just been shut down the entire time you're talking. If that makes sense. Did you notice something? Mentioned something that people kept walking in and out, or there, I guess, would be backup staff on the back corner of this side of the courtroom. Every time you brought up a certain point or element. Certain individuals would use mannerisms like shaking their head, get up and walk out, and halfway through your uh, your turn, they were all gone. By the time by the time you were finished, everybody over there had left the courtroom. Everybody had left. before you were finished, everybody on their side had left the courtroom, except for like one or two people. Right. Out of six or seven. There was a woman who was sitting on the other side with red hair. This woman was writing down a lot of things that was being said. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who she She was. never left. Yeah, she was sitting by herself. Oh, right. Yeah. You noticed her as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll never know. There's also, there are a couple firms that, that don't like Kelly AI who read my blog. And they, we know they could have been there too. Right. Like you said, it's not about just him. Uh, right. This is applications. And whether he's black, red, purple, green, yellow, it doesn't matter. Why was this, I not allowed in? Why is I not allowed in? Why me? Why me? With everybody else standing here, why you go after me? And, and I follow, just from a legal standpoint, the 8A and 12B6. How can he plead with specificity if he can't get discovery? You can't, there's conspiracies. You can't, you can't cite specificity in conspiracy if you can't do discovery to find out the conspirer, what they're saying. For all we know, the Republican Exactly. So, yeah, like you said, it was in the paper. You were, you were allowed, but somewhere in there, there's a small little note saying no Chris King or no black man or, or something. You think somebody's got to be talking about racial issues or leave them out? I mean, what is that? I think it's like a private club where they want a place to go speak freely without having this voice or someone documenting what's going on. We're here at KingCast.net. I'm with Mike Gannon. Good afternoon. And his avalanche. It's back. Mike, stand next to the avalanche, man. This is a, a historic moment. We've got the dome in the background of the state house. Mike, uh, how did you get the avalanche back? Uh, well, my son had to go to Superior Court and file a motion for them to release it after they refused to release it at District Court. No, I understand. It had been quite some time. The National Police came and got this truck. Uh, for reasons uh, kind of unbeknownst to you, uh, they said that PJ, your son, was involved in some 
possibly yeah. criminal activity. Right, yeah. That changed the, 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 uh, the story around on that three or four different times what he was involved in. And uh, they basically had no reason to keep the truck and they had no grounds basically to take the truck and the judge basically told them, what up? You know what's funny is uh, some time ago I interviewed you about this truck and you, we, I saw the agreement that was written up with the prosecutor right, and everything with district like court, that. Yeah. yeah, in district court, and that didn't work. And right. so now, um, what judge was in a superior court? I offhand, I can't really say. I didn't, okay. you know. Yeah. But he, he, he was he put his foot down and just basically said, "Go get your truck. No taxes, no fees, no fines to be levied." Bingo. Because they wanted me to pay for towing. Oh, I believe. Well, you gotta pay. You gotta pay for the towing. Read it. Read it. <laughs> Don't break this. I don't think I can.